So as you can see, we went through many prototypes on the way to the commercial version of the Bowley lock. So I've got some hardware store locks here. I took them apart to uh, pull the cylinders out to show you sort of what we're talking about when we're referring to the quality of the lock. Um, you can see these are cast. Um, many of them are cast only where the material is needed. Um, this is very much, you know, the purpose is to save costs. The Bowley lock is manufactured like a high security lock that you that you get for $500. It's made out of solid 17-4 stainless steel with high-grade brass internals. Um, it's precision machine locally so we can control the tolerances. This lock will function excellent for decades. All right, so we're going to do a little test here to test the strength of our key because the most common concern we, we have when we show people the key is, is it going to break? You know, with this notch cut out in it, it looks like it's a weaker key. Um, so first of all, we're going to try to twist a uh, standard door lock key that you buy at your hardware store. And as you can see, I can twist it pretty easily. So let's go ahead and uh, do that with the Bowley key. Now, this key is thicker and made of a material that's approximately six or seven times stronger and highly corrosion resistant. It's a great stainless steel. Um, so let's see what I can do here. And it's just so strong, you, you literally cannot bend it by hand. It starts to dig into your fingers and hurt your hands. Okay, so wh what do we mean when we say shielding? Well, when you put your key into the lock, there is a cylindrical shield in the lock that the key has to rotate around. This shield stops picking tools from being able to, to reach up above it. Um, the pins, the pins would all be up here, so no tool can really be, you know, mani manipulated up into there. Um, once the idler's in, it's even more pronounced. There's less room to come through. Even if you did get a hook shaped pick, you, you can barely operate the pick. Also, it can only move back and forth about 70 thousandths of an inch. So at most, you could only get on one pin before you'd have to rotate the tool back out and put a new one in, which means you've already relocked the lock and reset everything. Um, the odds of having five tools in this lock at once and being able to manipulate them all is, is next to impossible. It, it really is a pick-proof lock. All right, guys, let's talk about bumping locks. So. In order to bump a lock, you put the bump key in and you pull it back one, one pin length or one key bidding distance. You know, that looks like it's over about an eighth of an inch, maybe 150 thou. Um, at that point, you put a tension wrench in the lock. Some people do this with their fingers, but in general, and then you would hit it. And as you hit it, the tension allows it to turn as soon as the pins jump off the top. So there's two problems with bumping in the bowler lock. The first is you can't apply tension to the lock from the outside. Here you're just tensioning the housing. It doesn't do anything. It has nothing to do with opening the lock. In order to apply a tension wrench, it would have to go back, be turned up, and enter the back of the back of the lock, which A, takes up a lot of your room in order to even get a key in, um, and B, will probably start to spin the idler which then keeps the lock in a lock position so that alone is a very big um, roadblock for, for bumpers the second thing is if you did manage to make a bump key um, you, you can't apply torque to it because it'll just move the lock so you can't apply any pretension as soon as you move in you're already in the pins pull you in you can't really hold it just a little bit in. Um, and, and thirdly, we only move 70 thou. In order to make a bump, a bump has to be a significant size on the key. Um, we're moving essentially under half of what a normal key does. We're going from the top of the key into the bidding 
a bump key would go from one bidding to another bidding. So we don't have the distance really to make a significant bump. And thirdly, our pins actually fall. Almost every other lock I've ever seen with pin tumblers, when the key goes in, it pushes the pins up to get the pins at the shear lines. Well, ours is the only lock that actually allows the pins to fall down. Um, that just fundamentally makes it hard to imagine how to bump the pins up. Um, you know, nobody's been able to bump it yet. We certainly haven't come up with a, a bump key that we think would remotely work. Um, I think over time it'll be proven to be bump proof. Um, I guess time will tell. So now that you understand a little bit about the internals of the lock, I'll show you how to function the lock. You put the key in, and the first step is you have to go around that shield. So right now, you're just in kind of a disengaged mode. When you get to the top, there's a little nub or bit on the end of the key. That's what actually applies torque to the lock cylinder. There's actually a slot at the back of the lock cylinder. And when you rotate up and get to the top, you push the key in. That's that 70 thou jump. That allows the pins to lower, unlocks the cylinder, and now your lock can be operated. When you want to take your key out, you go back to the top, pull the key back. Now you've disengaged it, relocked the pins, and you're back in neutral, where you can go to the bottom and remove that the key. That small extra process is what, is what adds all the security to this lock, and it becomes very natural after owning the lock for about five minutes.